Hey Troopers, welcome back to the shop. Today we are going to do a little brake bleed tutorial. I know we've covered uh, brakes and slave cylinders on occasion in the past, but today we're going to do some new stuff. Uh, we're actually converting our system today to DOT4. Okay, so normally the system requirement is DOT3 fluid. Today we're going to swap over DOT4. And uh, if you don't already know, I'm just going to share a few uh, stats with you. Dot four and dot three are absolutely compatible. You can blend the two. You can add dot four to a system that already has dot three in it, or vice versa. If you can't find any dot four for your dot four system, you can put dot three in. No harm, no foul. The real advantage to doing this today is that the dot four has a higher heat range. And so what this is going to help us do is this is going to help our, uh, we're going to keep our brakes cooler and we're going to avoid uh, some, some heat fade in the rear brakes going down mountain passes. Um, you know, especially in a trailer application, this could really be helpful. Um, so you're going to avoid a little bit of heat damage to uh, some of your, your systems. Um, dot 4 and dot 5 are not compatible. We see right here our boiling point is 265 degrees Celsius or 509 degrees Fahrenheit. And right here also on the bottle, just to confirm what I just told you, DOT4 can be used in DOT3 systems. So today we're going to convert our system over. We don't have ABS or anything to worry about, but this DOT4 is good for that. But if you're thinking about at all using DOT4 in a DOT5 system or DOT3 in a DOT5 system, do not do this. Dot 5 is a uh, standalone uh, type of brake fluid that you can't really blend or mix. Um, dot 5 and dot 6, semi compatible. Anyway, so let's get to it. What we've done is we've drained our reservoir out and we filled it up with dot 4. There is still dot 3 down in the lines below, and we're going to go for a good two person brake bleed. Why, with all the tools I have at my disposal, would I go for a two person brake bleed? Well, I'm lucky enough to have an assistant today, and um, the other reason is is that I really don't trust one-man bleeder kits. I've used a couple of them. We've got a pretty high-end vacuum system here with a reservoir that could easily hold, uh, what is that thing, good for two liters, and um, I don't like it. It's got this generic universal fitting that's supposed to go over any brake bleeder nipple, and uh, I don't really like the way it fits. It, it's not snug enough for me. And when you hook it up to the compressed air, it's basically a vacuum valve. And it pulls in air. And I don't trust that. I don't like that. So we're going to go ahead and raise the truck up. Um, I'm going to have to periodically maintain that reservoir, which is why I've got a, a, a ladder standing over there. Um, but we're going to lift the truck up with my friend inside. And that's going to help us get underneath and have a look. Whoa, why is the back end? Wow, I, did we move the truck, dude? No, it's just slow to come up. We're going to be on a bit of an angle. That's the way it is. This thing feels like it's in zoom mode or something. I'm trying to get it to back out a little bit. Okay, so we got a bit of a slant on the truck here, but... Uh, I'm just going to make sure my contacts are really well established. Yes, they are. I'm lifting under the cross member on that side, down on the frame in the back. <coughs> Bit of a low overhead in this shop, uh, so I do have to be careful as to how high I go, because I don't want to squish my trooper baby into the roof. But, what's that? Me neither. Okay. Um, hey, if you want to reach across and open up that passenger window, it'll just be able to let us hear each other a little better. Okay, that's as high as I'm going to go. And coming down, there we go, we've hit the locks. Now we know we're safe. Trust my life to a hoist. And here's my other friend for bleeding. If you know anybody that works in a hospital or veterinary supply place, these large syringes, this is just a 60 mil, but you would be amazed how much fluid I can move with this. Yes, I can go and get a suction syringe, but around this shop, those are pretty much used generically for extraction. So there's always crap inside of it. I don't want to waste time to clean it out. 
Um, in this case, I like to use this to actually extract all the DOT3 out of my reservoir. And as you can see, uh, well, there was a little bit of gear lube in there, so it's, it's kind of contaminated. But anyways, the other thing to know about DOT3 and DOT4, which I have discussed before, um, brake fluid is a pretty amazing chemical in the repertoire of automotive chemicals. Oh, I'm just checking out that aspres asbestos braid there. i got to pull that. Um, DOT3 and DOT4 are hydroscopic fluids, which mean they are a bit different than other fluids in your chemical repertoire. Uh, hydroscopic means that these brake fluids, from the moment you crack the cap and pull that safety seal off, this fluid is extracting moisture from the atmosphere, which is why we change out our brake fluid on a recommended annual basis. So once a year, if you live in moist climates especially, you should be changing out your brake fluid because it is pulling moisture from the atmosphere and there are going to be water bubbles in the fluid. So I'm just going to get myself a couple of gloves here to protect my hands and um, we're going to get to work. I'm going to film this while my friend works the system inside. So just give me a second here while I put my gloves on and I'll explain our system. We're just using a verbal call and response system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a very tight fitting line onto the end of that brake bleeder, uh, which is going to be the tubing that I just showed you. And I'm going to use call and response with my friend in the truck. And so, oh boy, okay, I'm going to grab a new tube because that one is really stuck in the hole. And I can't find any more new tube at this moment, so I'll let out anyways. Alright, so, um, do you mind if I just say your name, dude? Yeah, dude. Okay, so my buddy's name is Matthew, and Matthew and I are going to uh, be using a call and response system, as I indicated. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this surgical tubing, and I'm going to make sure that's really snug on the end of that fitting. You want it to be really snug. I've got my wrench on there, and I'm putting it here because I know to open it, I'm going to have to crack lefty-loosey, righty-tighty, and so I want the room on this side to be able to open it up. So once I get my tube on there, oh, this tube is not fitting these nipples. Oh, dude, I might have to hunt a new piece of tube here. All right. So I'll explain it because um, it's kind of hard to film this while I'm doing it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, holy Christ, the light won't shine on the subject that I'm trying to film because the camera fucking blocks the light. That's my headlamp. Anyways, I get a tight fitting tube on here and I put that down in a reservoir that's got some fluid in it. And I want the end of the tube in the fluid so that the tube can't suck up any air. Right? And so once you got your tube on there, I'm going to get ready to crack the bleeder nipple. But seconds before, just as I'm cracking the bleeder nipple, I say push. Matthew pushes the brake pedal to the floor of the truck. Then Matthew says holding. Then I close the bleeder nipple after I've got, you know, you'll be able to see the fluid going through your clear tube. And once it slows down, you'll see air bubbles, you'll see black fluid, maybe you'll see some gray crap or some water. And once, it's, once the flow stops, then you want to close the nipple. You don't want to open the nipple more than a half a turn because then the threads start to open up and you're losing your seal. And as you close it, you say release. Well, not as, after you close it, you say release. And then Matthew will say released. And then we, we repeat the process. So I'm opening it. I say push or depress, whatever your fucking word is. What have we been using? We haven't started yet. Uh, push works. Yeah, okay. So I say push. Matthew says holding. That lets me know that he's got the pedal on the floor. And then I close the, knee, the, the nipple and I say release. And he says released. And that tells me that I can open it up again and tell him to push. 
Don't give me any of this fucking pump the pedal with the fucking bleeder nipple opened a dozen times. You're just like activating a syringe, pushing, pushing, pushing. It keeps sucking back each time you push. So you don't want to draw stuff back into the caliper. You just want to ram it and push it through in a hydraulic fashion. So I'll get uh, another piece of tube here that's going to fit my nipple a little better and I'll get to work. Um, but for now, that's basically our method. I'll let you see us doing it here in a minute. Alright fellas, we're back with this bleeding tutorial. Upgrading the system with DOT4. Uh, it took me a second here just to get my tube fixed up. I did take some of my supplies home to the garage at home. Anyways, I've got my assistant up in the driver's seat and he is ready to depress the pedal uh, as soon as I tell him to. You can see how I've set my nut up. I've got that tube on the end of that bleeder as snug as she will go and I'm basically or I, I'm opening the valve the bleeder nipple here one third of a turn effectively and each time uh, I open it he's going to hit the pedal squish the fluid out he's going to hold the pedal down on the floor and then I'm going to close the nipple and he's going to release the pedal and so what we're doing is we're basically use, using a suction action to uh, get all that fluid out of there and so we follow the line down here and you can see I've got a bottle suspended here and there's the end of my line sitting in the fluid so if you have any old dot three fluid or if you're gonna extract with a syringe or somehow get the fluid out of your reservoir just throw it in the bottom of the bottle here now I'm gonna get about eight pedal pumps before I need to go and check my master cylinder and make sure that I haven't you don't want to drain the fluid in the master cylinder down below the lines um, or else it's going to start to pull air back into the system and then you're right back to square one. The other thing to know about bleeding your brakes on your trooper and pretty much for every vehicle that does not have ABS is that you're going to be starting with the wheel that is furthest from the master cylinder. So um, on a left hand uh, North American vehicle that master cylinder is typically right up beside the driver on the opposite side of the firewall and so we're going to go to the rear passenger tire then we're going to go to the rear driver's tire then we're going to go up to the passenger front tire and then we're going to finish off at the driver's front wheel so let's go ahead and get ready Matthew are you ready? ready. okay so Matthew what I want you to do is I want you to pump the brake pedal hard like three times and then release it Release. Okay, now get ready and press. Pressing. Okay, you can see it coming through the lines here. Now it doesn't take more than a couple seconds. Alright, holding. Holding. And release. Release. Now look down on the bottom of the line here. You can start to see, look at all that crap that's coming out. These, uh, these brake uh, master cylinders, or these, sorry, these brake calipers have only been on here for a couple of months and we're getting some shit out of the line so um, I didn't get a real good bleed on when I put these on and there's a good chance that there was some old crap in the lines so what Matthew's doing by pumping the pedal a few times before I crack the bleeder is he's building up some pressure in the system to help eject some of this crap alright Matthew pump the pedal a couple of times okay. alright and push Holding and release and you see that air bubble it's trying to go back up to the nipple I don't want that to go inside so I've got it closed before that gets there I know it kinda sounds like Lamaze class guys but this is the best way to do it this is the most reliable way to do it without having anything trapped in your system pump a couple more times okay okay you released Release. okay now depress holding and release. release so choose your fucking call and response words whether you want to say push pump depress I don't care what you say but a little call and response goes a long way with your partner and yeah eventually you'll give birth to a healthy baby boy keep the rubber side down fellas